Hello, I'm continuing my reviews on the Godzilla series with Godzilla Tokyo SOS. Now, Tokyo SOS came out in 2003, and this is the 28th film in the Godzilla franchise. 27th, if you don't count the 1998 American Godzilla. This is also the 5th film of the Millennium Godzilla series, and the film acts as a direct sequel to the previous film, Godzilla Against Mechagodzilla. Now, this and Godzilla Against Against Mechagodzilla are really the only two Millennium films that share any continuity with each other. The movie also acts as a direct sequel to the original Mothra movie. Now, Godzilla Tokyo SOS is a good movie, but my issue with the film, and this was also my issue with the previous film, is it never seems to rise above being just good enough. Like, it's such a standard, run-of-the-mill Godzilla movie, and I know I've said that a lot about the other Millennium films, but honestly, that's my biggest issue with the Millennium series, is a lot of these movies are good, but ultimately kind of forgettable. Now, what the plot of Godzilla Tokyo SOS is it picks up where the previous film left off. Now, in the previous film, the Japanese government built a robot version of Godzilla from the bones of the original Godzilla, dubbed Kiru, or Mecha. Godzilla. But in this movie, Mothra and her twin fairies, the Shobijin, show up, and they warn that by removing Godzilla's bones from the sea, mankind has disturbed a spiritual balance. And they warn that if the Japanese government does not return the bones of the original Godzilla to the sea, then Mothra will declare war on mankind. So now the Japanese government is kind of between a rock and a hard place, where if they get rid of Kiru, they get rid of their only defense against this new Godzilla. Godzilla who has shown up, but the Shobijin insist that Mothra will defend Japan from Godzilla, but they're not sure if they can trust Mothra. But eventually in the film, the new Godzilla does show up again, and now only Mothra and Kiru can stop him. Now, Hiroshi Kozumi comes back playing the same character he played in the original Mothra movie, and I did think that was really cool how this film had a lot of continuity with that original Mothra film. It was also great seeing Hiroshi Kozumi come back. Unfortunately, his role in the film is very small. Now, his nephew Yushi is basically the main human protagonist of the film. He is one of the mechanics on Kiru who seems to develop a special bond with Kiru. Now, he's played by Nobaro Kaneko, who does a good job in the film with what he's given, but unfortunately, the character of Yushi is kind of a bland protagonist and is also kind of a dick. Akira Nakao comes back playing the same character he played in the previous film. Yuniko Shaku comes back briefly as the character of Akani, who was the main human protagonist of the previous film, and it honestly made me wish she was in the movie more because she was a much better protagonist than the main character of this movie. Now, the monster battles in the film are cool, but the ending is taken directly from the original Mothra vs. Godzilla. But honestly, the character who steals this movie is Kiru. Despite being a robot, he very much is a character in this movie. Now, in the previous film, they kind of hinted that Kiru could potentially have a soul, but in this movie, they kind of confirm that, where you realize that he is possessed by the spirit of the original Godzilla, who simply wants to rest in peace. Now, in this movie, there is a scene where the carcass of a giant turtle that was killed by Godzilla washes the shore. No, it's not Gamera. It's actually a creature from a 1970 film from Toho called Space Amoeba, and they actually do reference one of the human characters from that movie in this movie, making that film also in continuity with this. Now, overall, I would recommend this movie, but don't be expecting anything that's gonna blow you away. Again, it's a very standard Godzilla film. I would say the best thing about this movie is definitely Machiro Oshima's score for the film. She also did the score for Godzilla vs. Megagiris and Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. And her score in the film, there are points where it's very bombastic, but there are also points in the movie where it's very melancholy. But it's a very good score. But yeah, that was my review on Godzilla Tokyo SOS, and bye.